Nick here, hope you guys are doing well. And I know I sound like a broken record every time I mention machine learning or artificial intelligence, but the truth is that they've come to take over nearly every aspect of our lives. We see such technologies deeply embedded in our phones, our cars, our personal assistants, and now even our homes. The truth is that a lot of people believe that such work is reserved for the world's best technology companies, and the most exciting research has recently been done in what's called image classification, the ability for a computer to intelligently recognize an object. Such work is the foundation of technologies like self-driving cars, and people believe that it's reserved for the Apples and the Facebooks and the Googles and the Teslas of the world. A lot of people have created this misunderstanding that in order to get your hands dirty with machine learning and artificial intelligence, you need to be some genius or industry veteran. And I'm here to tell you that that is completely false. In fact, in just just a few minutes, I'm going to show you how you can build your very own image classifier. You'll be able to train your laptop or workstation to intelligently recognize any object. Yes, any object with insanely high probabilities, and it's only going to take you a couple of minutes. Machine learning and artificial intelligence should be for everyone, and I'm going to show you how. Let's check it out. So before we get started, let's take a step back and try and understand a high level approach to image classification. Essentially, when I want a computer to recognize a cat, a dog, a coffee mug, or even an iPhone, we make use of what's called a feature. A feature is nothing more than an intelligent characteristic about that particular object that can better help a computer make that decision. For example, if I want to categorize a water bottle, I'm probably going to be looking at things like shape contrast, height, width, transparency, or even the label of the water bottle itself. Or if I'm going to be recognizing faces, skin color, hair color, eye color, all come up as really important characteristics. Obviously, these characteristics differ depending on the object that you want to identify, but nonetheless individually form a single feature. You can then take these features and then hand it off to a computer that's going to train itself by looking at those features and then applying them to a training set of images. And a training set is nothing more than hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of new images, all of which contain the object that you're trying to identify. And over time and over hours and hours and hours, your computer is slowly going to pick up the small minute differences in the features that make for one object or the other. And the result is a very good model model that can probabilistically determine whether or not an image contains the object that you're trying to identify. Now, as you can imagine, crafting these features for yourselves and then building out image detection algorithms not only takes up a lot of time and computational power, but it also requires a lot of dense calculus. So today, we're going to be using a process known as transfer learning, in which we take a pre-built model that's already been trained on a set of images and then apply it to our case. Thankfully, our model has been trained using Google's ImageNet database, which contains information on 1,000 different classes like Dalmatian, Golden Retriever, coffee mug, laundry machine, or dishwasher. And this is going to help us build out our image classifier. So now that we have all of the groundwork laid out, Let's start coding. First things first, you're going to need to install Python. Python is an incredibly lightweight, efficient, and just flat out beautiful programming language that's used in nearly every industry. It's a very easy installation that just involves running a few setup docs, so every link that you're going to need is actually down below already. It's going to link you to my Medium post that highlights all of the code bits, all of the references, and every single link that you're going to need to access. So click down below, go to the Python installation page, and download it, and then we can move on to the next step. All right, now we're going to need to install TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a numerical calculation library that specializes in machine learning, and it's going to abstract out a lot of the dense math and model calculation that we'll need to do. So it's super important to install this. All you need to do is again, reference the installation docs, and if you have a Mac, it's super easy, and a Windows or Linux machine is just a bit harder. Great, now that we have all of the basic installation requirements out of the way, and by the way, if you ever get stuck, please reference my Medium post down below. It contains all of the code snippets. It's a lot more detailed than this video, and you can simply copy and paste your way through the entire project if need be. 
Great, now we can move on to cloning the Git repository. We're going to need to grab the ImageNet model produced and developed by Google and then put it onto our own computer. And this is done by cloning the repository. All you have to do is run a simple git clone command and once you're done, make sure you put this in a specific location on your computer that you're comfortable with, perhaps on your desktop or in a documents folder. Now for the most important part, downloading the images. Whether or not you're going to be differentiating between shoes or cameras or couches or laptops is done right here. So make sure you find a data set of images that you're comfortable with. For this example, I'm going to be using flowers because it's a really easy data set that's publicly available online. We can download it with a single line in terminal, but before we do so, make sure that you're inside the repository we just cloned. So get into it using a terminal window, and once you're there, you can run this single line that's going to download a bunch of pictures of flowers separated by category of different types into your computer. If you've made it this far, you are ready to start training your model. Now that we have a bunch of images, we need to teach the computer what to look for. And this is done through the training process. Thankfully for us, this logic is encapsulated in just a few lines of Python that we need to run, which again is all highlighted and referenced down below in my Medium post. So check it out if you wanna just copy and paste your way through the tutorial. Once you're done running these lines, you can begin training your model, which usually takes about 30 to 45 minutes. The training process is by far the most important piece of the puzzle for this project. It's not only going to take its time to teach your computer what there is to learn about all of the images that we've curated, and it's going to store them in bottleneck files, which essentially encapsulates all of the learning that has been done. Once the training is complete, you are ready to test out your classifier. Again, it should take a little while, and depending on the laptop that you have, it's probably gonna take around 30 to 45 minutes, and if you have a very, very slow computer, it's probably gonna take about an hour. Once you are done with the training process, now begins the fun part. Go to Google and download any image that relates to the particular object that you want to identify. This can be shoes, couches, glassware, however you set up your folder structure is really important here because it's going to identify the objects that you set up. For our purposes, we're using flower. So I'm gonna to go to Google and grab an image of a daisy and then test it out locally. So download it to your desktop and all there's left to do is run a single line of Python where the image argument is directly leading to the path of the file we just downloaded. Hit enter and you can see all of the probable results that have been returned to you. Congratulations, you have successfully built your own image classifier. You can add more pictures, retrain your model, and have an even higher accuracy. As you can see, we've put together a really profound and powerful image classifier, all from a very general understanding of computer science. Hopefully, I've inspired all of you tinkerers and creators out there to just go out and use what tools are at your disposal to do some pretty cool things. Again, if any part of this video felt hasty or not specific enough, I highly encourage you to check out my Medium post down below. Believe me, it contains everything you're going to need to know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's the first of its kind. I haven't really done anything like this before, so any feedback you may have is greatly appreciated. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for making it this far. Click my links down below to read my Huffington Post articles and follow me on social media when you can. Thanks, guys.